Welcome inside the Citrus TV studios for a special web edition of Q's Countdown as Syracuse gets set to take on North Florida inside the Carrier Dome. Alongside Matt Liberman and Drew Carter, I'm Marco Sochi. Guys, Syracuse has played two Power 5 teams thus far. And they've lost, lost both of those games. Are you guys worried about this team at all? You know, Marco, I'm not super worried. If you look at the first four games that Syracuse played, they were very encouraging. And against these two Power 5 teams, South Carolina and Wisconsin, they're both very, very solid squads, now both ranked inside the top 20, and they're both pretty bad matchups for the Orange, so I'm not panicking if I'm a Syracuse fan. I would have to agree with you. South Carolina is one of the more underrated teams in this country, perhaps the most underrated team in this country. In Wisconsin, they're good all around from the point guards to the forward to the center. They can do basically everything with the ball. They can shoot the ball really well, and there's just a great matchup against SU. Yeah, uh, after all these matchups, Syracuse goes nine deep. They can do a lot of mixing and matching, but there's one thing that's for sure when it comes to Jim Beheim's lineups. I need to see something, something. He gave up two easy jump shots right in the lane. That's his responsibility. He knows that. There's nowhere to be found. Our best offensive team right now, our best team is with Tyler Lydon at center. He played 30 minutes a game, he played 27 at center. And we got to the final four. He'll, he's our best center, there's no question. Daywan, Pascal are not ready to play at this level against the top, you know, South Carolina's a top 20 team, maybe better. So we, we can't win with those two guys right now. They're gonna have to play better. So you heard it, the head man Jim Beheim saying that Tyler Lydon's his best guy at the five. Now you guys have some of your best lineups. I'm assuming both of you guys have to have Tyler Lydon at the five. And I do, Marco. It might sound a little bit radical for Syracuse fans to hear that because Tyler Lydon, you don't think of him as your prototypical center. He's only 6'9", and there are a couple other guys who you might think would play ahead of him at the middle of the zone for Syracuse. You know, Daywan Coleman, perhaps Pascal Chukwu. But I'm going to have Tyler Lydon at the five in my best lineup. I trust Jim Beheim. I think he knows his team a little bit better than I do, so I'm going to keep him at the five. And the rest of the lineup, I've got Franklin Howard, John Gillen, Tyus Battle, and Andrew White the third. That's four guards. Yes, I'm going four guards. It's all about pace and space, baby. It's going to be impossible to defend that five if you're a Syracuse opponent because you've got five shooters all around the perimeter. You've got so much space inside the lane for slashers. Plus, in transition, that team is going to be lethal. I think you've got to play those five for at least five to ten minutes per game because opposing teams will not be able to stop it. Four guards is bold. Yeah. I have three guards in mind. I do not have four, but you have to start with Frank Howard. He's playing like the best point guard in the, one of the best point guards in the ACC right now. He's second in the ACC in assists. He's what is making this team run right now. Up next, you have to have Tyus Battle. He's extremely talented. I don't know why he's not getting minutes. He is by far the most talented player on this team. From an athletic standpoint, from a skill standpoint, he needs the minutes. Next, Andrew White. He's the best scorer on the team. We know that. He needs to prove that he can put the ball, he can bring the ball to the basket, but he's the most proven scorer. Next, Tyler Roberson at the four. He's a relentless rebounder. He hasn't shown it this year, but we've seen it in the past with his 20 rebounds against Duke. He has to be at the four for me. And then, like you said, Tyler Lydon at the five. He runs that zone defense better than anybody else on this team. He's the best scorer out of, any, uh, out of anybody that can play at the five. Like Jim Bayham said, uh, Pascal Chukwu, Daylon Coleman, they are not ready to play the five at this level. Drew going with four guards, thinking maybe some of those like old that. Villanova teams a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Shoot the three. I'm thinking the Warriors, the death lineup. Hey, that too. Yep. I mean, it, it, it's certainly the way basketball is exactly. starting to move. Right. But let's jump to this week's game. North Florida coming to the Dome on Saturday. They're the Ospreys, by the way, in the Atlantic Sun. Not a lot of people ever heard of this team. <laughs> uh, what are your keys to the game? So, Marco, I'm tempted to just say here, wake up, walk to the Dome, and play the game for Syracuse <laughs> as my key because that might be all they really need to do. You know, they should handle North Florida pretty easily. But for a real key to the game, because, you know, they pay me the big bucks to do actual anal analysis, Matt, I'm going to say the top of the zone because North Florida turns the ball over a ton. They're the third-to-last team in the nation in terms of turnover rate on the offensive end, and that Syracuse zone, it forces a ton of turnovers. I want five steals apiece from both Franklin Howard and Andrew White That's the third. Bold. I know, yeah, I'm bold today. I'm feeling it, Matt, because I got the pink tie on. You get out <laughs> in transition for Syracuse. I think they run up the score by doing that, getting steals, and it's because the top of the zone. I agree with you. They can basically roll out of bed, show up in their pajamas, and win this game. It won't be that hard. But for me, it has to be scoring in the paint. They had eight points in the paint against South Carolina. This is a team with a seven foot two center. <laughs> you get eight points in the paint against South Carolina, he's seven foot two. You have five guys, five guys above 6'8". You need to finish at the rim. Right now, only their point guards are doing it. That's sad for a team that is this big. 
Guys, time for the predictions now. Any surprises here, or are we going Syracuse big? Uh, Syracuse has got to get the win for me. I think it's going to be 81-59. There's no surprise in this game. Syracuse is just that much better. This is an Atlantic Sun team. I mean, I don't really see many surprises coming out of this game. Atlantic Sun, you don't hear that every day on a Syracuse basketball show. I'm going to one-up you 93-58 to the final for me with Syracuse pulling out a dominating win. I want to see the Orange come out, treat this like an ACC game. If I'm Jim Beheim, I don't want my team to just cruise to a win here coming off of two straight losses. This is a get-right game for the Orange. Come out, crush North Florida, win by 35, get back on the right track, Marco. And two big wins. That'll keep the Orange fans happy. That'll do it for us here in the Citrus TV studio. Thank you so much and tune in next week.